Long before the advent of the traditional engagement ring, we relied on a number of different forms of jewelry to signify our intention to a loved one. Several of those have been rings, but there also has been a rich history of symbolic meaning in the jewelry we gave. I'd like to step you through a few of those and decodify the language hidden in these pieces. The first I'm going to show you is a ring, and it is this beautiful ring of two hearts entwined. Now, the symbolism in this is pretty straightforward. The stones had particular meaning at the time. Diamonds, as they do now, have always meant eternity. And in this case, we have a sapphire and ruby. Now, the sapphire, this may sound sappy, but meant purity, and it meant fidelity. That was for the woman. The red ruby was for passion, and that was supposed to symbolize the man. So this is the joining of two hearts in passion, fidelity, and sincerity. As I said, long before the ring was the go-to token of love, the brooch was actually much more popular. There was much read into the idea of the brooch closing and clasping as uh, two things being joined together. It was a way of saying, you can be sure of my feelings. This little fella is a ruby and pearl bead in yellow gold and not only were you saying that you could be sure of something but the B signified be sure of my love and again we've got rubies here denoting passion and pearls were quite often considered the gifts of Aphrodite so they also signified love in this instance Continuing with our themes of insects, the dragonfly and butterfly were both very common gifts in jewelry in the 19th century. The dragonfly, as in this instance, was meant to be incredibly agile. So you gave this when you wanted someone to navigate through tumultuous life changes with ease. The butterfly and the dragonfly both go through periods of chrysalis. So this was something you gave to someone so that they had ease with that transition. And in this instance, the abdomen is decorated with an opal and opals were significant of luck. So this gift to someone would have been wishing them ease and speed through a difficult time with luck. Several of the pieces of jewelry that were popular in the 19th century were intended to send a message to the audience around you. Such is the case with this rather magnificent 19th century French tremblant brooch, so-called because each of the flowers is resting on a spring that would tremble as the wearer danced or laughed. They can be worn a number of ways, but each of these flowers had a particular meaning. This uh, bottom flower here is an aster, and what the aster actually meant was that you were receptive to invitations. The rest of the flowers in this particular brooch had to do with the bloom of youth. This is the kind of thing that a woman would have worn to the season where matches were made to show that she was in the bloom of her youth and she was receptive to offers of marriage. You may look at 19th century jewelry and think that they were fascinated by flora and fauna. They're all decorated with flowers, birds, and insects of some kind. But each of those used actually had a specific meaning, which related to the intention when you gave the piece of jewelry as a gift. In this brooch, we've got two meanings. Here in the bird's beak, we have a forget-me-not flower, which, as the name implies, was something you gave to someone who you wanted to keep you in mind. The bird in this brooch, possibly a swallow or a dove, uh, could have denoted two different things. A swallow was very popular because they mated for life. 
and they always returned home to their nest. The other particular quality swallows had was they were great for guiding sailors home. Because they returned to their nest, a sailor could be sure if spotted offshore, they could follow it back. Now, if this was a dove, depending on how you interpret this brooch, a dove meant love or peace. So, depending on the sentiment you wish to convey, this is the kind of jewelry you would give someone. The symbolism of the next piece I'd like to show you may be lost on a modern audience, but the three-leaf clover, if given to someone, signified domesticity and submissiveness, which were considered fine qualities for a woman to possess, particularly in the 19th century, maybe lost its context to a modern audience. The next brooch I'd like to look at is this incredible Victorian Gothic fantasy. It is rich in symbolism and is perhaps even heavy-handed in the message to the receiver. There's a large garnet carbuncle in the middle, this cabochon stone, which signified nobility and love. Wrapped in snakes and ivy, ivy was a symbol of domestic happiness, and the serpent meant eternity. There's the famous story of the engagement ring given Queen Victoria by her beloved Albert that was the form of a snake wrapping around the finger with a diamond on the back of its head. Once that gift had been given, everyone wanted a snake engagement ring. And the snake, though used in reference to antiquity, came to mean again eternity. Then you have these decorations of seed pearls, which once again were the gifts of Aphrodite. So this brooch is saying to the receiver, I love you eternally and nobly. This is one of my favorites. And while we're taking quite a departure from 19th or 18th century jewelry, this is probably only 20 or 30 years old, but I wanted to show you because the symbolism we've been talking about is still very much alive. This particular figure some will know as the Hercules knot and others as the lover's knot. It's two strands intertwined to give each other strength by relying on each other. So once again, this was probably a gift from a husband to a wife to indicate the love that one had for them. This next piece, a lot of people probably aren't sure what it is. It is a small pin of two griffins formed into a heart by wrapping their necks around one another. Now, griffins, particularly in the 19th century, meant protection. They were thought to be mythical guardians that would take care of the owner. Now, more than just a pin, this has a little loop of gold on the back that would have allowed the wearer to put a small pocket watch on it. Now, if you were wearing a watch on a mythical creature that was meant to protect you, that was saying to those around you that not only could you be counted on for protection, but you were also as reliable as clockwork. Even more so, in terms of digging into the symbolism of this piece, the griffins have emeralds for eyes. And in the 19th and 18th century, people thought that an emerald would give you the power of foresight. They even thought that if you kept an emerald under your tongue, it would allow you to see the future. So emeralds were very popular little accents for eyes on creatures, just to also not only give you the dependability, and reliability and protection, but also foresight. This next piece 
has a slightly more unusual significance attached to it. While it looks like a locket, it is actually a compact mirror that the wearer could hold around their neck, and it is decorated with lotus flowers floating on a pond. Now the lotus flower was considered something unusual and exotic, and while Orientalist themes and Eastern themes were coming into art quite regularly at that time, the lotus actually meant estrangement to a Victorian audience. So wearing something like this could be an indication to those around you that you were estranged from your children or from a loved one, and it was a topic of conversation best avoided. This next piece was made to commemorate the passing of Halley's Comet in the late 19th century. And it was such a exciting occurrence that several pieces were made to commemorate it. But it was also common to give these to a loved one, to say, you passed through my life like a shooting star. Here we have it in diamonds. And what was common at the time, because it predates the invention of white gold or the ability to work with platinum, it's set in silver. It was also said that these sorts of things were set in silver because the diamonds were not cut as precisely as they are today. So silver allowed them to shine just that little bit brighter, particularly in candlelight. 